Good afternoon, Tyler Moquin Lee, pastoral intern at First Lutheran Cincinnati here with you uh, this, this afternoon. This is my first ever uh, midweek mid prayer um, recorded video that I'm, I'm doing today, so I'm really excited to, to, be, able to, speak, to be able to speak with you all. Uh, I'm here uh, at my place outside now um, just because it's such a beautiful day today. Uh, I've got my dog Luther with me, keeping me company this afternoon. Um, here he is, if he w wants to say hi. Oh, maybe if you can see him, say hello. <laughs> uh, but I just wanted to, to give you a little sense about where I am and uh, who I'm with today. So uh, this past week was a really great week for me because I got to see a lot of the OTR community, a lot of the downtown community with uh, that, that's kind of surrounding the, the whole First Lutheran area. And uh, Pastor Brian took me on a, a great tour starting on Friday and then uh, we had a second half of the tour on on Monday where we kind of touched the, the the northern part of the area so that was really cool to see and all the time I'm kind of thinking about what I'm seeing and, and observing and also thinking a little bit about what's going on with the bell tower too and I couldn't help but kind of draw a connection to one of my favorite stories uh, fav favorite pieces of literature, um, The Hunchback of Notre Dame by Victor Hugo. And I admittedly watched uh, the Disney rendition, which isn't quite as faithful to the story, but I admittedly watched that this past weekend just because uh, there's just a lot of really good stuff in that. And it kind of just made me draw those little parallels, the whole bell tower and the whole idea of uh, the people around, around the church. And so I think that's just a, a really interesting story. Disney does this really good job about talking about um, sort of the, the main themes of that story being justice and mercy. For those of you not familiar with it, um, The Hunchback of Notre Dame is kind of centers around two main characters within, uh, within the story. You have uh, Esmeralda, who is a gypsy woman, and she's, uh, she's a dancer, and she, um, she's kind of also a fortune teller too, and she's not exactly liked by uh, most of the medieval community, especially those in power. And then you have Quasimodo, who is, uh, he's kind of a recluse. He lives up in the bell tower. He rings the bells at Notre Dame. Um, but he's, he's also, as Victor Hugo paints him, uh, disfigured and um, kind of scary looking. He's got a hump. He's half blind. He's half deaf. Um, and so he, he's often also considered to be an outcast on the margin. And so I thought a little bit about this and we, a lot of what we talk about, especially being churches, how do we reach those people who are outcast? Uh, how do we re reach the people on the margin? And uh, how, do we, how do we tell their stories? How do we, how do we uplift them? And so I just kind of love that, that story a whole lot. It's one of my, my favorite things. At the end of the book, it doesn't always, it doesn't end so well for uh, Esmeralda and Quasimodo, but um, in the in the movie, of course, it's Disney it has a happy ending, uh, which we all which we all like like to hear. I think the other thing about this too is there's it's not a coincidence that it centers around the Cathedral of Notre Dame. Uh, Notre Dame is actually French word for or French set of words for uh, Our Lady, which uh, is of course a reference to the Virgin Mary, who is also famous for. Uh, one of the most famous Bible passages that we, we quote today in, in the book of Luke, uh, chapter 1, the Magnificat. Uh, my soul magnifies the Lord and rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked upon the lowliness of his handmaiden. Uh, he's cast the mighty down from their thrones and uplifted the humble of heart. Uh, he's sent away the rich uh, with nothing to eat, and he's given good food to those who are hungry. And so that whole sort of uh, centered around that whole sort of theme of justice and mercy, it's really quite appropriate. So I want to encourage you today to think about, and you can, you can either think about it, you can add it in the comments, whatever you want to do. Uh, feel free to engage here. Uh, but think about those who are, um, who are maybe on the outcast of society, uh, maybe people that, that you wouldn't normally talk to or wouldn't normally interact with, and think about how we can show justice and mercy to them. Uh, we oftentimes, we talk about those two terms so often in our faith life because uh, they are so important to the life of a Christian. And we see uh, the ideal of justice and mercy in, in the cross and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, who gives us 
mercy, who gives us life, who gives us his own righteousness. Um, and so it's just a beautiful sort of, sort of parallel that I was able to draw there. Um, but all that I've, I've been thinking about, and uh, it just kind of inspired me to, to talk a little bit about this. And hopefully I'll be able to uh, talk again a, a little more about, about something else, uh, do another midday prayer sometime in the near future. Uh, with that, I would like to ha go ahead and uh, start our prayer. And to open up the prayer, I'd like to actually take uh, a few of the verses of one of the, my favorite songs from that movie, which is God Help the Out Outcast. It's a, it's a beautiful prayer. Um, so I'll start off my prayer with that. But um, will you go ahead and join me in prayer? The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God help the outcasts, hungry from birth. Give them the mercy they don't find on earth. God help my people, the poor and downtrod. God help the outcasts, children of God. Gracious and almighty God, we give you thanks for the many blessings that you've given us today. We thank you for uh, the resources that you've given us, for food and for shelter, for our family and friends and community. Help us to be mindful of others. Help us to recognize your face, your image in the presence of others as well. Help us to be able to be uh, merciful and to stand up for justice. Help us to be unifying rather than divisive. Help us to be attentive to the needs of others. We ask that you forgive us of our sins and that you bless us and keep us the remainder of this week. All this we ask in your most holy and precious name. Amen. Thank you all again for joining me today. I'm so happy to be here at First Lutheran. I'm so happy to have such a supportive community here. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you and speaking, seeing you and speaking with you again soon. Have a great rest of your week. Go in peace serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.